All right, so let's go ahead and start some cleanup here. Um, I think I'm going to start with the tile class. Uh, I guess we already cleaned up most of that, but we're no longer going to use this tile type enumeration that we were using before, so I'm just going to destroy that. Um, let's go ahead and save here. Uh, back to my world screen. Oh boy. Where to begin? Um, new variables. Let's see, we have our map dimensions. Uh, everything looks good there. I'm going to go ahead and just kill these values so that we know we uh, set them right. Those should be populated from our map when it loads. Sorry, cat knocked a box off the table. Uh, tile size, that is our drawing tile size of 32. We're starting at 2019 is our uh, map XY. Um, sprite sources. I am no longer going to be using a texture 2D here for sprite sources. Uh, calling the, the tile set multiple times really is going to consume more memory than we actually want to do. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, let's see. I know there's more I want to do there. I'm just going to destroy this function for fetching the tile source. No longer going to be needing that. Hey, cleaning up our program here. It's always nice. <laughs> Let's see, sprite batch dot draw. Something that I will be adding here in replacement eventually, uh, I guess for the next tutorial will be um, a little trigger, trigger script handler. It'll be kind of fun, I think. Now let's see, so fetch tile source. What is that going to be? That is going to now be uh, pulled from our map class. Um, oops, sorry. We're just going to say map dot tile list x y dot source rectangle. See, from our map editor, we're actually going to capture um, the tile's source whenever we select it from in our editor, and it's going to pass it through that file to the source rectangle. So every single tile will store a source for it, which is pretty convenient. Oh, what else do I want? Make sure that I corrected that little problem I made in the last video. We have a greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. Okay, so that's all right. Um, let's go ahead and go to our new sub, and I'll show you how we implement and utilize our map handler. So scroll back up to new. And it is a little more involved than this was. I mean, this looks a lot more simple, but um, we have so much more power using our map handler than we did before. Okay, so I'm just going to dim a... Now let's dim MH for map handler as new map handler. Simple enough. Uh, here's where we're going to define the map. So we're going to say map now equals um, mh map handler dot load map function. So our map is going to equal a new instance of our map base as we did before. Like that. So um, I'm just going to select world as the default and I haven't actually added a map file to the directory I have a couple that I created uh, previously um, so I will be adding one of those I'll show you how to add that as well let's see 
We want to reset our map height and width as soon as we load the new file. So I'm going to say map width equals map dot map width. And same with the height. Map height equals whatever height was uh, loaded from that map file. And uh, let's see. The, the start location, whenever we alter these map X and map Y values, it, or, it will literally teleport us to those uh, in game. So uh, by passing that map start location X and Y here, it'll teleport us to that location. And we'll also use that for a trigger. It's pretty, pretty nice and simple. Um, so I'm going to say map dot start location dot x and map y of course is going to be map dot start location dot y. So as soon as that loads, it it immediately uh, resets these values and then teleports us to that start location or the tune, I guess. I'll go ahead and save that. I do not have my error window up here. It's probably a good idea to keep that visible, so I can see things. It doesn't look like I have any here at the moment, which I should be happy for, but I'm sure there's something I've overlooked. 